a continuation on my previous message. Anybody was here the last time I spoke? Amen. Amen. Was anybody blessed by that word? Yeah. I know I was blessed. I was blessed by it too. Um, God is so good. But the, this is um, part two of that message, and it's kind of a series that God has put on my heart called Delivered for Definition. And I feel like so many of us Christians, especially the young generation, has lost definition on who they are with God. And I really think God is bringing us and calling us in the church to come into a place where we're delivered into what He defines us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give, give God some praise. Amen. Amen. So I'm just going to recap quickly my previous message for those who weren't here. Um, it was titled, Moving from Oppression to Possession. And I wanted you to understand your location, whether you were in Egypt, in the wilderness, or in Canaan, the promised land. And I showed you how many Christians get stuck in the wilderness, not even knowing that there's something bigger and better that God has planned for them. Amen? Amen. So understanding your location, we also talked about leaving your losses. We looked at Moses, the, the, before they came into the promised land, Moses died, their leader died. And sometimes you have to go through losses before God can bring you into the place where he wants you. Amen. We also looked at being led by the Spirit because they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant into the middle of the Jordan, and that's where the Jordan River dried up and they all crossed into the promised land on dry ground. So we talked about being led by the Spirit to live a new life and we looked at full restoration, how God is going to restore every piece and part of your, of your, of His promise for you. Amen? Amen. So with that being said, who's ready for God to do a new thing? I say who's ready for God to do a new thing? We are in a new season. God is going to do a new thing, amen? God is going to do a new thing in your life. He's going to do a new work. So how many people like the new I-4 project? I set you up. I set you up real good there. You see, we get so excited when we hear God is going to do a new thing. But we forget we think about the product and not the process. Because when God is bringing you through a new thing, it's going to feel like deconstruction. He's going to have to break down some things in your life before he can build up something bigger and better. Give God a shout. I know he's doing a new thing when I see him taking away some of the old things. And there's a new lane change. They built a brand new lane, but they had to demo the old one. God is going to move you into a new direction. God is going to move you into a new position. And you're going to see some of the old things that you were used to, that worked for a while. They've been breaking. They've been tearing down. God said, I need to replace it. You know, last time we, we had an awesome service, God's word came to us. We were so excited coming into a new season. But I didn't want to tell you the bad part because then it, it wouldn't have been the whole picture, you know. I, you know, I had to leave it on a, on a high note. And then I have to tell you the whole story today. And I'm glad I got the opportunity to preach because when God told Moses about the promised land, the first thing he said was, you are going into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. Here's, here's the point. When you come into a new season, into a new territory, you're coming into new enemies. You're coming into new Battles. Yeah. You're coming into a position where you have to face new things. 
Yeah. Yes, all the old things we talked about, the old things that you've been struggling with have been gone when you stretch out your hand. Like Moses stretched out his hand after they crossed the Red Sea, all of the old things you've dealt with are gone. But God is bringing you into a new time where you have to fight new enemies. Yeah. And that's not a really good way to end a, a nice sermon. You know, oh, man, I got to come into a new season. I have new battles to face. But the word of the Lord says, anywhere where you set your foot, you will be victorious. In this season, I declare it over this church. Even if you take the wrong step, you will still be victorious. God is bringing you into a new time where you have to face new battles, just like on the I-4 pro project. We're going to have to face new road rage that we never thought we had before. I'm speaking to myself and nobody else. I hate that I-4 project. I hate it because all I have to do is get on the I-4 for one mile, and that one mile has doubled my commute time. And it was so frustrating. It was frustrating going to work and leaving at the same time and getting there later than I normally do. It's frustrating. I know it's supposed to take 20 minutes. Why is it taking me 40 minutes to get to work? It shouldn't. It's like less than 20 miles. All because they're doing a new thing. See, it's frustrating when you expect something and what you are going through is not what you expected. Amen. It's frustrating when you're praying about something and it's taking so much longer for God to answer you than you've been expecting. It's so frustrating praying about the same thing for year after year after year expecting God to bring an answer. It's frustrating because we expect it to happen instantly. We expect God to move instantly. But a new thing, when God is doing a new thing, sometimes instantly is not the best way to do it. So we have to realign what our expectations are of our prayers. We have to rethink how we expect from God and rethink what He is doing in our life. Amen? Amen? So what I started doing, I have my navigation, right? And they have this feature where you can turn on the traffic. And now, even if I go down the street to Publix, I'm putting on my navigation. You know? Because I know what the destination is. I just need to know before I leave how long it's going to take me to get there. I need to know if I'm going to be sitting in traffic for 20 minutes or if there's a better way to get where I'm going. That way I align my expectations before I even leave the house to know how long it's gonna get me where I need to go. So, how do we do that with God? How do we realign our expectations? How do we turn on our traffic indicator with God? It's not an easy thing to do. It's all about what we expect and how we expect God to move in our life. So my main text today is coming out of Joshua chapter 4, verses 1 and 3. If you could just put it up on the screen. Call Jason out. <laughs> Joshua chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. When all, when the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, when the whole church had finished crossing the Jordan, when all the people in the church that week, two week, three weeks ago, finished crossing the Jordan, now the Lord said, somebody say this is important. Now the Lord said to Joshua, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests 
are standing and carry them with you and put them down. Somebody say, put them down. Put them down. At the place where you stay tonight. Turn to your neighbor and give him my topic. Say, you got the stones? You got the stones. <laughs> Say it in your Al Capone voice. You got the stone? You got the stone. That's a terrible Al Capone voice. I ain't talking about kidney stones. But new seasons come with new battles. And new battles and new enemies needs new tactics. And God has equipped us to fight these new battles in new ways. God has equipped us to look at these things in a new light. So now I'm going to get to the bank. Yeah. I know you guys have been wondering what's in this bag. So in this bag, I got some stones. Oh. I got some. They're awesome. So I'm going to set these stones up, if anybody can see. I'm going to set some stones over here. This is my Jordan River, if you can imagine for me. We have a various size of stones, right? So I put these stones, set them down in the river. And if you can imagine for me, this is the center of the, the river, where the presence of God is, where the Ark of the Covenant is. So, I'm an Israelite. I am now crossing the river into a new season, into a new territory, into the promised land that God has set out for me. So, I come in on dry ground, right? I walk through the stones on dry ground. I'm coming through, and I'm crossing into a new territory. The Bible says, after they've all crossed through, then the Lord said, turn back and pick up stones. Okay, so Joshua tells me, I'm one of the 12, Joshua, Joshua selects, he says, go back into the middle of the Jordan, right where the priests are standing, and pick a stone. So I'm, I'm a, you know, he picked me because I'm strong. I can pick up the biggest stone, right? So am I going to pick up the smallest one? No, I want to impress Joshua, so I'm going to pick up the biggest one. And I lift it up over my shoulder. And then Joshua says, carry it all the way to camp. I'm like, man, that's not far. I should pick up the smaller one now and tell me how far i got to go. All right, so I'm going to take this stone, carry it up a couple miles, all the way to camp. But then throw it over my shoulder, take it to camp. And then here we're going to make a memorial of it. And now they took the 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan and brought it into camp. And they made a memorial that would stay there. And the, the point of the memorial was for God to, for the generations to come after Joshua come to be able to look at the memorial yeah. and see what God did yeah. that day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, these stones are not soft, right? These stones are very hard. They're very heavy. And God wants you to remember it. God, why do you want me to remember the hard things that I had to go through? God, why do you want me to remember these hard things that I had to go through, these heavy things in my life that I had to live with? that I've been going through, that I've been picking up, that I've been carrying, all of these hard things. God, why do you want me to remember the daddy that left me at a young age and was never there for me? God, why do you want me to remember the guy who stole my innocence? God, why do you want me to remember the spouse that left me and my children? God, why do you want me to remember 
the losses that I had to go through, the hard times I had to go through. God, why do you need me to take up this stone into a new season? I thought I just crossed over and I didn't have to worry about it no more. But God says, no, you need to pick it up. And I got to take it into a new season. I have to take this stone, these hard things that I had to live with into a new season. I have to remember it and then tell my children about it. God, what does this mean? But I want you to look at where they picked up the stones. Where were they? At the priest's feet. At the very place the priests are standing. What were the priests holding? The Ark of the Covenant. What is the Ark of the Covenant? The presence, the presence of the Lord. God is telling you right in the heart of things that you had to go through in your life. He was standing there right with you. He was right in the very place in the hardest things you had to get through. The same thing that you've been struggling with that you've been carrying. God has been right there. He said, I was standing with you in the middle of it. Out of experience. 
You see, it's what you've experienced yes. that will allow you to bring down your next giant. You see, these same hard things that you've gone through, that's what God wants you to look at your Goliath and say, in the name of Jesus, get on the floor. It's what you've experienced yes, Lord. that'll bring down your battle. Yes, Just like we had to bring our stones, our, our experiences, and put them down mm -hmm. out of the hardest things we had to experience. Yeah. We had to lay them down mm -hmm. and remember them for a while. But after you put them down, they become a weapon. Yes. You know, we think of slingshots and stones as child play but they were not back then this was a weapon that david had to know how to use it was his experience and his weapon that allowed him to take down goliath it wasn't a child's toy it was a weapon your stones your experiences those things that you've been carrying in the future in the battles that you have to face coming up those are your weapons. Those are your weapons. You look at the devil and say, hey, look what God has brought me through. You see this pile of stones? Those are everything that God has brought me through. And this new battle, this new enemy I have to face, hey, he's pointing to the stones. God already brought me through that, so he's going to bring me through this. just want to wrap up with this last stone because there was one stone that was placed in front of a grave and on the third day some bones began to breathe now we're going from 12 stones to 5 stones to 1 stone and on that third day, some bones began to breathe within the grave. Yes. And on that third day, a body that they said was dead came to life. And on that third day, the ground began to shake. And on that third day, my stone, my stone, my last stone, rolled away. Somebody get on your feet. Hallelujah. Hey, I don't know what you're fighting right now. I don't know what demons have been attacking you. I don't know if you've been dealing with anxiety, depression. I don't know if you've been getting a call from the doctor saying you got cancer. But in the name of Jesus, that stone that rolled away was the last stone that I need to know. It was the last stone that brought me victory for every other battle. Jesus Christ, his resurrected body, gives us the authority to face any demon, any devil, in the name of Jesus, we stomp on it. This new season will bring you new battles, but it's what God has brought you through to this day that will allow you, mixed with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that will make you victorious in any direction you go. Amen? Somebody just raise your hand. Lord, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for your power. God, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the resurrection power, oh God. I don't know what people have been going through this Sunday, oh Lord God, but in the name of Jesus, I declare tonight will be a new night. I declare tonight we're putting some things down and we're using them as a weapon to fight our new battles, Lord God.